Hi folks, I thought I'd just do a short video today, um, this is regarding the uh, disco lights that we were looking at uh, last week and we actually did fix them um, and afterwards I actually commented on the video for the first one, the smaller of the, of the two lights that I got it wrong and I thought having watched the video, not only did I get it wrong but I probably wasn't very uh, explicit how I when I explained some of the meter readings that I saw and if I had been more explicit uh, explaining the meter readings that we were seeing I probably wouldn't have got it wrong um, so I thought we'd make a short video let's talk about that uh, disco light and about what we saw on the test meter on the multimeter and let's see if we can make some sense out of that and then understand and I explain why I got it wrong and what what was wrong okay so Basically, if you remember, we had uh, a four-coloured LED stage light, disco light. And the way the circuit on that was, and I know this is how it would be, and I'll tell you how I know. We had 12 volts coming in, 12 volt positive, yeah? And then we had different coloured LEDs. So, we had red, green, blue, white. And I'm sure, if I still had this here, if we got a test meter, uh, we don't because I had to give it back to the customer. I was in a rush, um, which is also another reason why I got it wrong. Um, but I'm sure that what we would have had was three diodes in series like that for each colour. Yeah, so if we had, uh, let's put the green ones in here. Um, we don't need to put the other colours in because they're all the same. We just want to show you a working channel and the non working one, and you'll see. Uh, green, yeah. Now, oh, let's let's make let's make these LEDs, shall we? This is the this is the symbol for an LED. The little arrow is pointing out. Okay. There was more than three LEDs for each colour, as we know. There was maybe six or nine. I didn't count them. Uh, but how it would have been wired up is like this. So if there were six LEDs for each colour, you would have another set of three like this. Okay, connected like that. Okay, can we fit some arrows on these? I'm sure we can fit some arrows here. And the same with with, with the green. This would have got up, up be the same, yeah. With with with, with the uh, three more, and so on. I don't need to draw all them, do I? Um, so that's basically what we had. Then coming down from here was a FET field effect transistor MOSFET in fact metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor and I'll even draw the, the the correct symbol for them this time so that was the first one and then on the green we'll have another one gate so what you have here this is the gate which switches this on and off yeah this is your drain and this is your source and this went down to ground zero volts you often see this symbol if you don't know symbols well if you see that it, that is the same as saying zero volts yeah it's the same thing so that's what we had and what I was doing I was taking my test meter why do we always draw test meters like an analog one I was taking my test meter and I was connecting it between here and here yeah and what I was seeing here on a good working channel when the LEDs were off I was seeing somewhere in the region of 7 volts and when the LEDs were on I was seeing somewhere in the region of 5 volts and the, the first question you should ask if you're wondering why are we seeing those voltages there the first question you should ask or well, you should think to yourself if this transistor turns on it becomes like a short circuit effectively yeah so if that turns on surely here you would see zero volts because it's shorted to ground wouldn't you but we weren't we were seeing about five and it was working so we know it's correct, 7 and 5 is working. So, first I need to explain to you why we see the voltage we see. 
the first thing we need to consider is when this is turned off so why have we got seven volts there well basically you've got your 12 volts coming in you've got three leds yeah and then your this is off so that's you've actually not there but your test meter has an internal resistance to read the voltage it has to pass some current through it otherwise it couldn't read it makes sense so your test meter is basically a resistor connecting to ground yeah from there to ground and it's a very high resistor it's about uh, 10 mega ohms 10 million ohms so it only passes an extremely small current through here but still it's a circuit now leds diodes the diodes yeah light emitting diodes they have across them when, when when they're conducting they have what's called a forward voltage yeah and the forward voltage of an led is about two volts uh different colored leds will have slightly different forward voltages uh you may even find two identical diodes that have a very slightly different forward voltage uh, they'll be very close but let's say they have two volts each yeah when you connect your meter from here to here with the tether you actually complete the circuit so an extremely small amount of current is coming through each of these no any enough to turn them on it's just an extreme extremely small amount of current yeah and each one is dropping about two volts so after the first one you've got about 10 volts after the second one, you've got about eight volts and then after the last one you've got about six volts yeah and what did we read when they were switched off seven that tells us two things it tells us that the chain of leds is good because i can see the voltage drop of each and it also tells us there are three <laughs> that's how i know there's three in, in each chain okay so that's why we had seven volts now let's explain why we had five volts when it was turned on the reason for that is because this FET isn't actually turning on or off so on for the LEDs on off for the LEDs off it's actually pulsing very rapidly and the reason it's doing that is because these diodes can't withstand more than the forward voltage drop across them without burning out so if this was turned on what you'd actually have is you'd have four volts across that one four volts across that one four volts across that one yeah and these leds would come extremely bright for an extremely short amount of time and burn out or maybe one would burn out and probably damage others anyway so that's why you can't just turn this transistor on you could put here or, or there a resistor to limit the current and you could design it such that when this one has two volts across it and this has two volts across it and this has two volts across it this will have six volts across it you, do, you use ohm's law to calculate the value of that resistor for a given current you know the current uh, you know the voltage yeah so you know two of the factors you can calculate the, the, the third one current equals v over r if you know those two you can calculate that so if you were a circuit designer you could actually do that you could calculate a resistor to go there and then you could turn this on and it would all be fine it would light up and when you turn it off it would go out but there's two problems with this first of all you'd end up with six volts across here yeah and six, you know all three in series and totally dead with six volts there and six volts there yeah and whatever wattage power these are dissipating that would have to dissipate an equal amount of power to make the circuit work and the power they are dissipating some's coming as heat and some's coming as light but we need they need to light up to do the job this resistor apart from making the circuit work is just wasting energy it's just wasting wattage power that you, for no reason apart from yeah making it work but there must be a better way second reason why this doesn't work if you notice with these stage lights not only can the leds be like green be on or green be off but green can also be half brightness or it can dim from off all the way up to full on and back down again yeah 
And the only way you're going to get that dimming effect effectively is by changing the value of that resistor. So that's the other good reason why we don't do it this way. So how do we do it? Well, we don't have the resistor, yeah? On this gate here, it's not getting switched on while the lights are on and off, while the lights are off. When the lights are on, it has a high frequency square wave on the gate, which is turning this on and on extremely rapidly. I don't know what frequency without getting the oscilloscope and having a look, but it could easily be 50 kilohertz, 50,000 times a second. It could be 100 kilohertz. Could be more. I suspect it's somewhere in that region, but, you know, it could be less. But it's going to be fast. It's going to be pretty damn fast. So when these are on, this is actually being switched on and off very rapidly. When these are off, this is zero volts. It's not being switched on at all. So this gate switches between zero and pulsing. Zero and pulsing. Now, if you look at this, imagine if that was on for 50% of the time, and that was off for 50% of the time, and so on. So say this is on for a microsecond, off for a microsecond, on for a microsecond, off for a microsecond. If it's like that, effectively, this is like a resistor. It's switching on and off very rapidly. And what you get here, because it's 50-50, is about half the voltage, about 6 volts. And that's what we were seeing when this was turning on. We were actually seeing 5 volts here, yeah? And that's why we see 5 volts there and not 0 volts when the transistor's on. Because it's not on all the time. If you want to dim this, what you can do is, you can make it stay on. Let's just draw this so it looks sensible. Yeah. Actually 50-50. You can make this like that. So it's still the same frequency. Yeah? But it's on for a shorter period of time. If that's on for a shorter period of time, less current's going to flow through here on average. So the voltage here is actually going to go up. When it reaches about 7, they switch off. Yeah, they, They're so dim you can't see them. If you go the other way, you can make this pulse wide. Still the same frequency. Just wide, yeah? So now this is on a lot more than it's off. So what happens is now this passes more current and the voltage here drops. You see your 5 volt. And that's why you were getting between 7 volts and 5 volts there. So that's why, that's how it works. Um, and I hope I've now clarified why you were seeing those for them. I'll be thinking, why, don't, why do I not see 0 when the transistor's on? Okay, so why didn't it work? On the bad one, let's just change to a different colour. On the bad, on the bad one, the bad channel. I was seeing on here about zero volts when the lights were off, yeah, and something like minus 0 0.1 when they were supposed to be on, or 0 0.2 something like that. And the reason I'm seeing that, I said on the video, I said you'll see that this minus thing if there isn't a proper circuit. And I was damn right there wasn't a proper circuit. When this is off, yeah, the only reason we can possibly see no volts here is if one of these LEDs is open circuit, if there's no 12 volts, but we know there's 12 volts, if one of these LEDs is open circuit, but we tested all the LEDs off the bench pass by, we know all the LEDs are fine, the only other reason you can see no volts there is if the circuit's broken here. Yeah? And this is why I was rushing, and I, I, I know this stuff. I know this stuff. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to get it out of your head than you, you might think. And then you think, yeah, you know this stuff. You should, you should see that straight away. So this is what was happening. This is what was wrong with it. We had a connector coming onto the board, yeah? And in the connector, the socket, there were, there were six pins. Yeah, and I said at the time, look at the stupid Chinese. <laughs> I shouldn't be, that's nothing racist. I know it's made in China and it was stupid. Okay, what have they done here? These first two went to 12 volts, yeah, and there's four more. But the connector I had from the LEDs was only a five pin, 
it had 12 volts, which is the common to all the four colours. Then it had the four colours, the negative end, this end, yeah? Uh, red, green, blue, white, whatever sequence you're in, yeah? And I said at the time, look, they've used a five pin, it doesn't even fit properly. I said, no, no, I've got, it's, it's there now, it's fitted right now. And it wasn't. I fitted it wrong, and that's what was wrong with it. So, what we had here is, when I fitted it wrong, that one was 12 volts. That was correct, yeah. This pin, I'd connected to the first LED colour, red, yeah. This one was green. This one was blue. And this one was going nowhere because the the plug was one up there so this was going nowhere yeah and this was connecting to there and that is the broken circuit so that's what was wrong with it if we had a faulty FET here only two things could have happened really either this would have been seven volts all the time and the LEDs would be off because this couldn't switch on it was open circuit or this would be naught volts well actually the way it wouldn't this would have been naught volts it would have burnt out the leds so the circuit would have been broken anyway that's really about the only two things that could have been there so the only proper explanation when we know these are okay for the naught volts is that uh, they are so um i hope uh, you enjoyed that one uh, i hope it's clarified a lot about what this meant and now you can see why I got it wrong. Uh, by chance, when I put it all back together uh, to put on one side, I happened to put the connector on the, in the other position, and it worked. <laughs> there you go. Okay, guys, hope you uh, appreciated that video, and I'll see you soon on the next one.